So we are now in the sixth film in the Mission Impossible franchise. And the big question is, how does Fallout hold up to the rest? Well, let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Mission Impossible Fallout, the sixth film in the franchise. I really do appreciate it. Now, I am a big fan of the Mission Impossible franchise. I've loved all the movies or really enjoyed all the movies. Big fan of Tom Cruise, too. It's funny. He was going to be Iron Man at one point in time. I have all the films uh, in my collection right here. We got the first one that came out of 1996 by Brian De Palma. Pretty good film. Then we got uh, Mission Impossible 2 right here. It was directed by John Woo. What's up, Mr. Woo? And then uh, we got Mission Impossible 3 right here. These are all on DVD because it was back in the day. Uh, this one was directed by J.J. Abrams. And at this point, I was like, man, these Mission Impossible films just keep getting better and better. And they continue to get better and better with Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. This one was directed by uh, Brad Bird, who uh, recently directed The uh, Incredibles 2. Uh, he did some other stuff, too. You can look him up. And um, lately, though, the last one in my collection is Mission Impossible Rogue Nation by Christopher uh, McQuarrie, who is also the director of the film that we're going to be talking about uh, right now in just a second. I'm just going to let you know. Go ahead and relax. I'm going to take my time. Just to feel you commenters like your reviews are too long. Well, hey, this one may be long. I don't know, but I'm just going to take my time. Now, as far as the Mission Impossible franchise goes, like I said, I really do love it, and as each film, um, uh, as they release each film, each film gets better and better. And I did not feel that way with the last film, uh, Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation. I felt it was still great, it was still entertaining, but I felt that it was a, you know, like it kind of plateaued. Like you know, we're going here. Oh no, I mean, we're going. Well, I can't do this. Which way is the camera? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's, it's, it's reversed. But as each film was like going up, when it got to Rogue Nation, it kind of plateaued. And so with this film, uh, Fallout being directed by the same guy, Christopher McCreary, you know, that is some uh, hesitation that I have. Like, I hope he, you know, kicks it up a notch. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. And when it comes to like, you know, action adventure films and things like this, I don't know. I just kind of had some confidence with this one. Um, I had an opportunity to see it Monday. Uh, but I was not able to go. Uh, so I saw this Thursday with regular crowd and I, I kind of just liked the environment there. But as I was walking into the theaters and up the escalator, I, like a presence of confidence just came on me. I, I got excited. Just kind of like, you know, man, I really do know that this movie is going to be a good movie. And I just got excited because sometimes, you know, I'll see a movie that I don't want to see. Uh, just or that I'm just not as excited at you know as I would be or anything else that you know is in my direct cup of tea. But with this one right here, I just felt so confident. But I'm always kind of saying to myself as I was you know finding my seat. And actually, when the movie started, I'm just like you know with all these action movies and James Bond and Mission Impossible, so I was like, how much new material can they still give us that actually feels new and feels fresh? I mean, is he just going to be doing another, well, I don't, another generic mission? You know, should you choose to accept it or is this going to be something, you know, different? And when the first scene of this movie started off and we're showing, we're showing Ethan Hunt, Tom Cruise, you know, I, I started to get fearful. I was like, oh man, this seems very dry. This seems very boring. It seems very generic. I've seen this before. You know, he gets some mysterious message with some cold word and he gets the mission it was just so like beat by beat and so familiar with it so when it's for like the first kind of five minutes of this film i was really uh kind of just turned off and just like you know wow you know i like you know already it's only been five minutes of the movie and we're getting we're getting something that we say in 100 times but as soon as that five minutes ended and we got to five minutes and one second that's when everything changed and this film just like you've seen all these mission impossible films and like i was like you're like what else can they do to surprise me they surprised me and they came with the left and the right and the uppercut and the hook and i was like whoa i don't know where all this is coming from you know what i'm saying but i liked it and it was it was just great and they just kind of like flipped everything on his head it's just far as like your expectations are, are concerned i'm just saying to myself oh well we ain't even 10 minutes in the movie are the bad guys gonna win already of course i'm not gonna tell you this here but i'm just saying all this right now guys because um you know i i mean 
I, I guess it just goes down to my expectations, but early on in this movie, we only 10 or 15 minutes in, and this film is already giving you more uh, of what you like in something that you've never seen before. As far as the characters are concerned, of course, we have uh, Ethan Hunt. Here is Tom Cruise. Uh, we have Ving Rhames. He's coming back. You know, he was barely in part four, but I'm glad he's back now. Simon Pegg, uh, he's in this as well. Uh, he popped up in the third one with J.J. Abrams. And he was more of a comic relief. And, but now he's in the field as an actual field agent. And I will talk about that more in a second. Angela Bassett, her gorgeous. But, oh, my goodness, Angela Bassett. Uh, Anyway, yeah, she's in. The, she comes back as well. And a new. Uh, we got Alec Baldwin. He's back. And somebody else that is new to uh, the cast is Henry Cavill. His name is August Walker, and uh, he was one of my. He was my second favorite character in this movie. Uh, actually, I'm gonna say third uh, favorite. Uh, Angela Bassett. It, I don't know. It was just something. Seeing uh, uh, a gorgeous, beautiful black woman in charge running the show. You know, I kind of like that. And you know, putting that aside, I mean, she just kind of did a great job or whatever. I just kind of like. She was just like, look, I don't, I don't trust nobody but myself. You know what I'm saying? This is how we're going to do it. And if you don't like it, you know, hey. So I, I like that, my sister. But uh, going back to Henry Cavill or Henry Cavill, you all know he had the big mustache in this movie, that which was real. And the studio would not let him uh, cut it off because they had to do those Justice League or reshoots or whatever. Uh, but the mustache in this film worked. He can do uh, no, he can do mustache. He can do no mustache, looking like Superman, or whatever. But he was like, you know, he's you know big and swole. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I was really just like looking forward to him and saying, okay, is he gonna be on the same level as uh, Tom Cruise, Ethan Hunt, in this movie? And he he does in some ways. He kind of steals the show uh, in a way. And that was just one scene. If y'all know me, y'all know I love my hand to hand fighting and things like that. They're fighting the bathroom. What they going at? <laughs> that was probably my one of my favorite parts in the whole movie or whatever because you know in the trailer you got Henry Cavill mad kind of loosening up his shoulders like right, I'm gonna kick somebody's ass and you know he he you know throw his fist like this trying to get loose and they do the little sound effects like boom boom dope scene in the movie I was like you know I, I'm enjoying the movie kind of sitting back like this but when that fight in that bathroom I, I was all in here like this like mm, yeah you know what I'm saying I'm doing over here and sorry I'm screaming in the mic I, I, I just realized that but it was nice and it's just something about a fight between like you just man man to man you know one on one mano y mano you know what I'm saying no guns no weapons nothing like that fist against fist and it just sends chills and uh, just down my body and down my spine and I, I just really love the scene like it, it was just 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 straight up dope manliness just just brawling out and about them destroying it you know it was nice I kind of got a reminder of uh what movie was that with uh, I'm gonna say Tom Cruise we're talking about him now Arnold Schwarzenegger True Lies directed by uh, James Cameron one of my favorite action scenes too you remember that uh, that action scene in that bathroom in that movie in my opinion this one does top of that one so you know th that's just great there and this film does just kind of give you a lot as far as the action is concerned that you've never seen before I mean there was the chase where you see the trailers with Tom Cruise driving a motorcycle that whole thing was like super dope too and it was long i was like dang how long is this action scene gonna go i mean the accent this action scene was like like a movie in itself you know when he's on the bike like a first second and third act in the action scene or whatever and the way that the camera was like moving around throughout all the cars and things like that now a lot of it was cgi and it was fake and i was able to pick that up but it wasn't enough to where it kind of like takes you out of the movie where you're like oh that's just too fake right there i mean it was like kind of like a little instance there here and there but at the same time the camera work was was they did a great job in this movie there are a ton of just long shots that just don't break they just go over here and zoom in and come around and swoop around and spin around and do all that and i'm just sitting there you know just kind of just like you know taking it all in you know i'm really really enjoying it now I, I'm, I'm 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 geeking out right now i'm telling you all the stuff that i loved about this film and i can talk for an hour but let me just dive in real quick just about some stuff that i did not like now when it comes to comedy and jokes in the movie um you have to be very careful with that i talk about that in the marvel films a whole ton um a whole bunch and when you have serious moments uh yeah when you have serious moments i'm okay with um 
funny moments in those serious situations, but I don't like jokes. For example, if you've seen the film Mission Impossible uh, Ghost Protocol, there is a scene in the movie to where they're in the giant skyscraper and Paula Patton, there's this other lady, some assassin, and uh, they're like fighting in the hotel room and, uh, you know, she gets kicked out of a window Tom Cruise is trying to, you know, swing his cable and fling himself in and get caught in the window and all that. And Jeremy Renner, and they're like hanging out the window. And it's like a breathtaking scene. It's like, man, you know, that was intense. They really did work their butt off while Simon Pegg is over here working in the hallway, not knowing what's going on. He's trying to change the numbers on the doors because they're trying to trick somebody. So he, after they saved Tom Cruise from falling uh, 50,000 feet and busting his face or whatever, they pull him up and it's like, oh, they're like, oh God, that was, that was close. Whoa, and they're catching their breath. And then Simon Pegg runs in like, whoa, you know, I got a lot of work done. That was like a real, like funny moment that was felt genuine and, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? I can't think. You know, it was just cohesive. Now, I don't. That's not the word I'm looking for either. It would. It, I don't know. It was just genuine and in and, and it worked. It was funny because they wasn't trying to be funny. It was just a real funny moment. There was a scene or two in this movie with Simon Pegg's character where I'm just like, bro, like the world is at stake here. Why are you cracking a joke right now? It's just it's just not funny. Let's take these things seriously. And another thing is Simon Pegg. I like him as an actor. You know, hey. But if you're going to be in the movie and you're going to be in the field, you got to be able to, you know, uh, you know, be as tough as Tom Cruise or Henry Cavill. And there was, a, you know, a, a, a scene or two where I already got his butt kicked. And yeah, I already got his butt kicked. And I was just kind of said to myself, OK, you need to, uh, you know, you, this, this is where you need to be at the desk or something like that. Uh, as far as everything else is concerned, like as far as the story, um, it was a bit convoluted at times. Um, I was engaged, but at times it was a few times I was like, whoa, there are just so many twists and turns in this movie to where you really don't know who to trust. At one point in time, I thought Ethan Hunt was a bad guy. You know what I'm saying? I thought Ethan was a bad guy at one point in time. I thought Henry Cavill's character, August Walker was a bad guy, being Rames. Uh, Angela Bass's character Sloan, Alec, but I just did not know who to trust, and they kept just switching things here and there, and you know, and it it was it was entertaining, uh, but at the same time, it was just a little bit too much for me, um, because I was like, whoa, okay, I definitely, I was in the movie, like I definitely need to see this again because I missed this point here. Uh, so the story is a little, you know, in and out at point in times, so, you know, motivations there are are not lived um, up to the hype as much as I want. Characters across the board I love, except for um, Simon Peck and even Ving Rhames. You know, that was a, a decent scene in this film to where, um, you know, he he was kind of pulling on your heartstrings and kind of, you know, showed a soft side to him before. You, you know, and I, I was kind of surprised, but like, OK, I see Ving Rhames. You coming with the act, you coming through with the acting and the performance and all that good stuff. That's great. Uh, the soundtrack in this film is, is lovely. The score, you know, they did a great job there of setting the scene and just kind of getting the mood right. And, um, you know, but another grab in this film, it, it comes in at, I think it's like two hours and 30 minutes, two hours and 27 minutes. I don't mind a two hour and a half, two and a half hour film. I don't mind a three hour film as long as it does not feel that long because Avatar didn't seem long to me. Neither did Titanic and I can list more examples, but this film did feel long to me where it didn't feel like we had three X. It felt like we had, excuse me, four and a half. And I'm just like, damn, like, okay, this movie is not over yet, but you know, okay. Um, it was, a little, it was a little exhausting. Now, uh, something else is if you've seen the second one, where is it at? You know what I'm talking about? But for some reason, I feel like I had have to just hold it up in the in the screen if you've seen the second one anthony hopkins was in this one and he made a line to uh ethan hunt's character he's like well uh ethan it's not mission dis it's not mission difficult it's mission impossible and i kind of like that line so the point i'm trying to make is when i was watching this movie there was a stunt towards the end i don't want to ruin it for you because you may like it but i was just like okay oh my gosh like this is just like impossible it can't happen all these other films in a perfect world i could see you possibly getting away but it's just impossible i don't see how you can do this then i was like well brandon that is the name of the movie mission impossible that's the name of the franchise so i guess you got me there 
Uh, but at the same time, it still did feel um, a bit unrealistic. Uh, but overall, guys, I, I really did enjoy the film. Um, I kind of felt like there was something else that I wanted to mention, but, uh, you know, it, it escapes me right now. Uh, but that's OK. As far as this film falls into the rest of them, uh, I really have to think about it. I like this one more than the last one. Uh, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if I liked it more than uh, Ghost Protocol, which is one of my like I think part three and part four are my favorites. Uh, but I do like this one more than the last one. And one of the things I think that, that you know I'm liking these is because they always change directors, uh, but they kept the same director as this one. I do not want Christopher McCreary to come back. Uh, for a third time because I do want another Mission Impossible movie not that I think he's horrible or anything like that I just want a little something different because it seemed like that was working well for the first four to five films if I had to rate Mission Impossible Fallout um, out of a 1 out of 10 I am going to give it an 8.5 out of 10 yes an 8.5 out of 10 but guys that is just my opinion for Mission Impossible Fallout have you seen the film or do you want to see it have I turned you on have I turned you off do you agree with me or do you disagree let me know down in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me the thumbs up and if you don't that's fine but you can still subscribe to my channel you can also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for a mission impossible fallout written and directed by Christopher McCurry, starring Tom Cruise, Ving Rhames, Simon Pegg, uh, Henry Cavill, Angela Bassett, Ving Rhames, I think I said his name already. And before you go, don't forget to always chase your dreams because I'm chasing mine. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.